السلام عليكم hello everybody happy Eid to every Muslim our video today about critical chest radiographs can't miss diagnosis chest radiographs are the most common radiologic tests performed in hospitals and emergency departments although radiologists are responsible for the final interpretation of studies Many chest radiographs are first viewed by non-radiologists. All physicians should be able to quickly and accurately identify a wide number of critical findings to help identify patients who need subsequent emergent care. I'll begin with pneumoperitoneum. Pneumoperitoneum refers to air within the peritoneal cavity most commonly from perforation of an abdominal viscous. Air will accumulate in the least dependent portion of the abdominal cavity. During upright chest radiographs, air will separate the liver, spleen, and intestines from diaphragm producing dark crescents. To ensure adequate air migration, patients should be kept upright for at least 5 minutes before the image is taken. Sometimes a double wall or regular design can be seen which refers to intestinal and external air outlining the intestinal wall. Number 2. Pneumothorax A pneumothorax occurs when air fills the space between the parietal and the visceral pleura of the lungs. A primary spontaneous pneumothorax occurs without any underlying lung disease and in the absence of an inciting event, while a secondary spontaneous pneumothorax occurs in people with underlying parenchymal lung disease, for example, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, pulmonary fibrosis. On a chest radiograph, a pneumothorax may be identified by a discrete shadowed line beyond which no lung markings are present. They most commonly occur in the lung apices, which are the least dependent part of the lung. However, on subine radiographs, pneumothoraces may be subpulmonic or anteromedial in location. Comparison between inspiratory and expiratory films may aid in detection. Number 3. Tension pneumothorax a tension pneumothorax is the accumulation of air under pressure in the pleural space. It develops when injured tissue creates a one-way valve for air to enter but not leave the pleural space. Diagnosis should be made on clinical grounds by contralateral tracheal deviation, ipsilateral hyperresonance to percussion, ipsilateral decreased breathed sounds, distended neck veins, and hypoperfusion. The typical radiographic findings are ipsilateral lung collapse with widening intercostal spaces and contralateral mediastinal deviation. With a left hemothorax, the left hemidiaphragm may be depressed, but the liver prevents this from developing on the right side. Number 4. Pneumomediastinum Pneumomediastinum is free air in the mediastinal structures. It most commonly occurs following a trauma or iatrogenic injury to the esophagus or adjacent alveoli. On chest radiographs, free air may outline anatomic structures. Common findings are a thin line of radiolicency that outlines the cardiac silhouette, vertically oriented streaks of air in the mediastinum. A double bronchial wall sign or lucency around the right pulmonary artery which is called the ring around the artery sign. Air is most easily detected retroesternally on lateral chest radiographs. Air is fixed in a pneumomediastinum and doesn't rise to the highest point. Number 5. Airway Foreign Body Airway foreign bodies are most often found in pediatric patients. The most common site of foreign bodies is the right meniscus bronchus. Due to its posterior location, 
shallow angle to the trachea and wide diameter. The density of the ingested item will determine whether it can be directly identified on radiographs. Indirect signs of ingestion include focal overinflation if there is partial obstruction or atelixis if there is more complete obstruction. The image shown demonstrates a radio-opaque earning backing lodged in the right main stem bronchus of a child. Number 6. Pericardial effusion. Pericardial effusion results from accumulation of fluid within the pericardial space. The classic finding on chest radiograph is an enlarged cardiac silhouette, the so-called water bottle heart. However, if the fluid accumulates rapidly, then minimal cardiomegaly may be present. Other potential findings include pleural effusion and rarely pericardial calcification. Number 7. Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome The most common findings on chest radiographs are bilateral, predominantly peripheral, asymmetric consolidations with air bronchograms. Septal lines and pleural effusions are uncommon findings. Early findings during the exudative phase are bilateral consolidations that obscure the pulmonary vascular markings. These obesities extend to more extensive diffuse consolidations that are typically asymmetric. In the subsequent fibrotic stage, a diffuse interstitial appearance may develop. Most radiographic abnormalities begin to resolve after 10 to 14 days if the patient survives. Number 8. Thoracic Aortic Aneurysm Thoracic aortic aneurysms are defined as a greater than 50% aneurysmal dilatation of the normal ascending thoracic aorta, aortic arch, or descending thoracic aorta. The descending thoracic aorta is the most common site. On chest radiographs, the most common findings are a widening of the mediastinal silhouette, enlargement of the thoracic knob, and tracheal displacement. Other radiologic findings include a double obesity appearance to the aorta representing true and false lumens, localized bulges along the aortic contour, and a disparity in the caliber of the descending and ascending aorta. Number 9. Diaphragmatic hernia. Diaphragmatic hernias are caused when a defect in the diaphragmatic wall allows for the herniation of abdominal contents into the thoracic cavity. The majority of tears are on the left side. On chest radiographs, asymmetry of a hemidiaphragm or changing diaphragmatic levels may be present. Gas-filled organs or a nasogastric tube within the thoracic cavity will confirm the diagnosis. Solid abdominal organs will appear as mushroom-shaped homogeneous obesities. Potential misdiagnosis can occur in the case of diaphragmatic paralysis or after lung reduction surgery. Number 10. Congestive heart failure. Congestive heart failure is a clinical syndrome in which the heart fails to adequately pump blood to metabolizing tissues. A number of typical findings may be present on a chest radiograph. With cardiomegaly, the cardiothoracic ratio increases to greater than 50% on a posterior anterior chest radiograph. Curly B lines may be present on the lung briefly that are the result of interlobular septal thickening. Accumulated pleural fluid may blunt the costophrenic angles or cause large pleural effusions. Pulmonary edema may cause bilateral increased lung markings in a perihilar or bad wing distribution. Increased pulmonary capillary pressure causes the upper lobe vessels to be equal or larger in caliber than the lower lobe vessels referred to as cephalization.
Number 11. Aspiration pneumonia. Aspiration pneumonia is an infectious process caused by aspirated oropharyngeal flora or gastric contents. It is differentiated from aspiration pneumonitis, which is caused by direct chemical insult from the inspirated material. Typical findings on chest radiographs are bilateral opacities in the middle or lower lung zones, in the acute phase, transient infiltrates or lower consolidation may be present, while chronic aspiration may appear as a solidified mass. Number 12. Hydronemothorax Hydronemothorax refers to the presence of both air and fluid within the pleural space. It may develop after esophageal rupture, trauma, infection with a gas-forming organism, development of a bronchopleural fistula, or iatrogenic after surgery. An upright chest radiograph will typically show a horizontal air fluid level that extends across the whole length of the hemithorax. For an air fluid level to be present, there must be both air and the fluid within the pleural space. Number 13. Left ventricular aneurysm. Left ventricular aneurysm is an uncommon complication after a myocardial infarction, in which weakened myocardial tissue creates a distinctive outpouching of the left ventricle. On chest radiographs, the total heart size will be enlarged with a prominent bulging of the left heart border. On lateral radiographs, there will be a distortion of the lateral heart profile, either anterior or posterior, depending on the region of outpouching. In some cases, a rim of calcification may be present outlining the aneurysm itself.